Welcome to the Medicine Path Podcast. I'm your host, Brian James. This is the first in a series of short episodes that celebrate the beloved yoga teacher TKV Desikachar, who died in 2016. Desikachar was the son of legendary yoga master T. Krishnamacharya and teacher to the philosopher J. Krishnamurti. He was a pioneer in the field of yoga therapy and author of the influential book The Heart of Yoga, published in 1995. His approach to teaching was based on the belief that yoga must be adapted to each individual according to their own interests, needs, and cultural background. This was his approach not only in what he taught, but in how he taught each student. And because of this, no single student's recollection of him quite captures the full picture of who he was. Over the years, I've sought out many of his longtime students to try and piece together a more complete picture of Deskachar as a man, and as a yoga teacher. Although I never had the chance to meet him in person, TKV Desikachar has had more influence on my yoga practice and teaching than anyone else. In the years since I was introduced to his work, I've absorbed as much of his teaching as I could through his many books, recorded talks, and study with his students, whom he considered his friends first and foremost. So, as my own small contribution to the honoring and preserving of Deskachar's legacy, I'll be releasing excerpts from interviews I've conducted with a few of his North American students. Each offers a unique glimpse into the life of this brilliant and remarkable man, known to his friends and students simply as Sir. This episode features highlights from an interview I recorded with Richard Miller back in September 2018. So I had some early influences, plus a Taoist master, uh, Stephen Chang from the Far East from China, who who was teaching me Taoist yoga. But as I deepened into my studies, I kept hearing the name of Desikachar. In 1979, a friend of mine, Rama Jodi Vernon, asked if I would host one of Desikachar's senior English teachers, Ian Rawlinson, for a several-week seminar, which I did. I had a yoga school. So I invited Ian to, for two weeks, come in and teach the teachings of TKV Desa Kachar. In that first lesson with Ian, it felt like a homecoming to me. And I subsequently handed Ian a letter, handwritten, that he was to deliver to Desa Kachar because in December of that year, he was going back to India to be with Desa Kachar and study. He delivered it to him in December. I got a note back from Desa Kachar within like a week. And on January 1st, I landed in Madras to begin my studies with Desa Kachar. And it really did feel like a homecoming. I felt I was in the hands of someone who really had a deep understanding, both from his own experience and the teachings he was also receiving from his father, T. Krishnamacharya. So we began a tutelage, we might say, that encompassed all the aspects of yoga from hatha yoga to pranayama breathing to meditation to study of the Upanishads, Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, chanting. It was really an extraordinary in-depth study where I was with him one-to-one. I would meet with him in his home for an hour or two. Then I would go to his Mandiram, his school, study with him where he was teaching groups, and then come back and again have private tutelage with him. And I was fortunate enough to return to India a second time, but also to have access to him as he was starting to come to the United States and one time in Europe where I was with him to continue deepening my studies. I have a fun little story, if you don't mind. When I first met him, he asked me what I was most interested in. And I said, meditation. And he takes my hand and he says, come with me. And he holds my hand and he brings me downstairs and he opens the door. And all of a sudden we're in his father's room. Now, Mm -hmm. his father at this time, I think is in his late 80s, early 90s. He's a, a ferocious figure. He's, you know, one of the greats of yoga. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, we're going to get caught in his father's room. (laughs) So he leads me over and opens this beautiful meditation chest, which is his father's altar, takes my finger and dunks it into a liquid and says, taste this, which I do. And he says, that's my daddy's hand-pressed sandalwood oil that he uses for meditation every morning. 
And I remember thinking to myself, oh, my God, <clears throat> we're going to get caught with <laughs> our fingers in the cookie jar. <laughs> so then we came back upstairs and I began my studies with Jessica Char. It was always something that stayed with me. Every morning in studying with Jessica Char, I would pass by Krishnamacharya, who was on a swing, and I would namaste and bow to him and then go in and do my studies with Jessica Char. What do you think the significance of the sandalwood paste was? Like, what, what was the significance of it for you in that moment? Several things. One, the intimacy with which Jessica Char very quickly invited me in to. And I found that was what was extraordinary about my relationship with Descachar and Jean. They both invited me into a very intimate, heartfelt, warm relationship where, it, like, Descachar always called us his friends, not his students. And Jean always said, I have no students. So there was a moment of intimacy where I was invited to come into his father's altar. Now, when we meditate, you know, we want something that smells good. So we have incense, something that we might put on our skin like sandalwood oil that has a sense of feeling and glide to it. We would put flowers down. That's for the eyes, a piece of fruit for taste. All the senses are invited in. So there'd be a bell or a chant. So my sense is the sandalwood had several uh, portals for Krishnamachari. One, he spent the time to hand press it. That created an intimacy with the oil. Sandalwood oil, when it's put on the skin, has a lot of healing effects. But it also has an incredible smell, as we know, when we burn sandalwood incense. So I, I would assume these were instruments or portals that Krishnamachari used every day in his own meditation. And Deskachar, knowing of my interest, invited me into that intimacy of both his own understanding of his father's teachings, but also in a moment of introducing me, we'd, we might say, to his father through his father's hand-pressed sandalwood oil, which I got to taste. So yeah. maybe I was taking a taste of Krishnamacharya at that moment in a very intimate manner. And it is interesting, when I left after three months in that first study with Deskachar, he was always gracious to give gifts, and he gave me a gift of sandalwood incense in my last meeting with him in that first initial time that I spent with him in Madras. I'm sure that it's impossible for you to smell sandalwood now and not be taken right back to that moment. It's true. <laughs> and so maybe there's something in that too, Deskachar knowing that this would forever connect you to that place and time. It could be. And I know, you know, I was just at a conference with some of his longtime senior students, and we were talking about our experiences. And in the conference, there were pictures of Jessica Char everywhere. And I became very deeply moved when I would look at those pictures and look into his eyes, because whenever I'd be with him, it was a feeling of a very deep, heartfelt meeting, not just studying yoga, but really one human being to another human being and with an extraordinary mentor. <laughs> 